Yo, Snapchat, startups, innovation, jobs, growth, disruption, ideas boom, hashtag ideas boom. I don't know about your country, but in Australia, this is the massive trend at the moment. I recently saw the New South Wales government, our state government, put together a $190 million Jobs for New South Wales package that gives loans and grants to businesses and companies to create a million jobs by 2036. Now, I think this notion that startups and innovation creates lots of new jobs is completely and utterly a myth. It's only used by the government to make it look like they're doing something, and it's only used by everyone else to get government grants. <laughs> Because any truly innovative and disruptive company is not going to create new jobs, it's going to replace them, it's going to automate them internally and also within the wider economy that they're competing in. They start to still definitely adding value to society and progressing humanity forward, but they're doing so by basically automating the process and making things more efficient. So doing things with less employees and doing things with less human labor. The cliche example is Instagram versus Kodak. So Kodak at its peak was a $28 billion company with over 90,000 employees. The same year they went bankrupt, Facebook bought Instagram for a billion dollars. They only had 13 employees. And the other perfect example is Uber right now. Uber's like, uh, they've just deployed 100 self-driving cars in Pittsburgh. So they're trying to replace not only their, their own employee costs, their own driver costs, but every other taxi truck driver in the world. The common definition for a startup right now is an organization that's formed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. I think what we need to do is add to the end of that definition uh, the, the phrase via automation, because that's really all that startups are doing. They're trying to find a repeatable uh, problem they can solve through automation. Now, yesterday I was talking about how to build entirely new economies on the blockchain. So I really want to build a peer-to-peer -peer economy where we all work for ourselves and there is no centralized structure, no businesses, no governments, all peer-to-peer. And now I've got an idea for how to kind of make that happen, like at least the, the basic abstract version of it. Um, but I was asked yesterday in a, in a conversation, like, how does that help startups in the future? How do people launch startups from this? And it got me thinking. Because in a peer-to-peer -peer economy, by default, everyone's a freelancer and a contractor. But when you're a freelancer and a contractor, all you're really doing is using your skill sets and time to solve other people's problems. That's the service you're offering. And this is something I realized really early on, that if you look at the first principles kind of approach of like, what the fuck are we doing? What are jobs? What are businesses? Why are we doing this thing? Really, all we're doing is solving problems. In the grand scheme of things, I'm sure like a lot of those jobs and all those problems are complete bullshit and just unnecessary. But if, if you look at it as like, you know, it's a subjective problem that person has, they go to a company or a freelancer to solve it for them. So for example, if you need a website built, you can go to a freelance web designer who will, who will solve that problem for you, or you can go to a company, which is really just a collection of people who can solve that problem for you. And so in a peer-to-peer -peer economy where everyone's a freelancer or a contractor, um, basically you don't need these, these corporate formal structures anymore that we call companies, because really they're just collections of people. You can dynamically form or dissolve those. So long term, I really want to replace the idea of jobs. I think they're modern day slavery that everyone's bought into. Everyone has a Stockholm syndrome with jobs. Um, but the idea of solving problems will still always exist. Which is really just a more efficient, more scalable, more applicable way of thinking of what we already do in the economy now, where basically jobs and businesses, they're all, they're all just trying to solve problems and solve them faster. And so the future of startups is just those two things combined. Uh, it's the idea that the economy is trying to solve problems as quickly as possible. That's what jobs are. That's what businesses are. And startups are just trying to create automated solutions to those problems. And so in the future, in a peer-to-peer -peer economy, here's how you launch a startup. Basically, the system lets you know, here's all the top, most common unsolved problems. They are opportunities for startups. So then what you can do is actually either form a startup of, the, of one yourself, basically instantly, or you can actually form a startup of a group of people from all around the world with different skill sets as like a dynamic startup that forms. Now your mission as a startup is basically to automate that problem. So that problem is always automated anytime another one comes through. Um, so you form this dynamic company, you put forward a proposal and ask for money. Anyone's able to then buy equity in that startup, in that automated startup. So it's kind of like a crowd sale or crowdfunding, uh, an IPO with crypto equity. So a new coin is created for that thing. This thing gives you the funds and resources to basically focus time and bring in more people to basically build a, a DAP, a decentralized application, which solves that problem in a very automated way, 100% automation. Now, this whole thing would also operate much like the economy does now, where there's no monopoly on one particular startup. There's, you know, there's a bunch of redundant startups out there all doing the same thing, all trying to save the, solve the same problem. But because this entire peer-to-peer -peer economy is all digital and all based on the blockchain, you can do things much more efficiently than they currently do in the, in the economy, where there's a lot of wastage with people doing the exact same thing and not really improving. So suppose there's been like 10 groups who have crowdfunded uh, uh, their particular solution to automate this, this very specific problem, and they've all deployed their dApps on this, on this economy blockchain. Now in the normal economy, when you need a problem solved, like say a website or something, there's basically like 100,000 different options, and they all do exactly the same thing. The only difference is really branding and marketing. In this economy, when someone posts that particular problem, the system identifies that it is, it is this specific problem. It then routes it to one of those 10 options um, and A-B tests them to find the best one. Now, this system wouldn't just A-B test one and find the best out of those 10 and then give all future problems to that one. No, any new future problems that come through, they get routed based on which one is most efficient at that time. So that's a very basic example, like your particular startup, which is all about just automating that particular problem. If yours actually works uh, twice as well as the next best competitor, you'll get twice as many problems sent to it. 
you're still getting to choose how much you charge for this system. You're basically charging uh, an automated fee. Um, and if you're getting twice as many problems sent to it, then you should be getting twice as much revenue. So there's an incentive there. In addition to this, all of these startups that are trying to solve this one problem are all floated. They all have floating currencies, which is essentially to say they all have floating shares. So they're all competing in the marketplace as well. <laughs> The net result of this is actually there's an, an economic incentive, um, a financial incentive to encourage people to automate every single problem that humans face. So I honestly believe that that is the future that we're going to inevitably end up in. Um, it's the future of work and the future of startups. But the funny thing is it goes completely against the status quo and the way things run right now. Because in this future world, there's no traditional business structures, there's no logos, no marketing, no offices, no jobs, no governments, no traditional taxes, no traditional investors. It's all open, all agile. This economic system actually embraces the idea of automation. It's not this scary thing that's going to replace everyone's jobs because um, there's always still going to be problems to solve. Everyone's still going to be doing stuff. I mean, we still need to reverse entropy. And the beauty is it actually saves people from the slavery of their just 9 to 5 jobs but still gives them something to do and something to contribute to. And it also makes the entire workforce much more resilient, agile, and efficient. As you